Assalamu alaikum salah. Just before we begin, if you support the Young Smirks podcast and you want to help support the channel, please go to the Patreon below and support us monthly so we can keep up with the shows. We've got lots of content coming up. We're going to have special content specifically for the Patreons as well as a new series on Hijra, inshallah. So please go to the Patreon below and support the podcast. Assalamu alaikum salah. <laughs> أحببت ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Welcome to the Young Smiths podcast We're here, let's talk Hijra And we're speaking about Egypt today So um, inshallah We're going to get a little rundown from Brother Umar About Egypt and whether it's still A place to look at, at In 2022 When it comes to Hijra Assalamu alaikum Umar Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh um, alhamdulillah, um, we've done a podcast regarding your time in Turkey, but you actually, I think you spent 10 years in Egypt, right? Uh, more. Let's, let's say 10 years. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, so, I'm bad with days, bro, but I think so it's more than 10 years. You spent so. over 10 years in, yeah, over 10 years, in yeah, Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to get a little bit of knowledge from you regarding yeah. Egypt, how it was your time there, and, and how has it changed? You know, I'm sure I've been told it's changed for the better, for the worse in different areas. And I was just wondering if, if it's still a good place to go for Hijra and for what type of intention one might be looking at in terms of Egypt. Right, okay. Egypt, uh, Egypt uh, let's say Cairo. Okay, let's say Cairo. Cairo is changing because of the new administrative city that's being built there. It's a big, big project. So uh, you find um, bridges going all through different parts of the city to make it easy for people to get from uh, Cairo to the new capital. So it's a lot of construction, a lot of bridges, a lot of different things going on. Um, I think that it may become easier in the future because they moved the immigration from downtown Cairo to uh, a place called Abbasia. Right, mm. and they started to implement like organization because before mm. it was just kind of like crazy. Mm. A lot of people just didn't bother with it; they just paid the fines when they leave the country. Um, the Arabic centers are still going strong, uh, but now you have to be licensed in order to, to teach so before you just had you can open up an apartment and just start teaching arabic like so you had yeah. a lot of little pop-up centers in neighborhoods and things like that so they kind of closed all that down and what's left are like kind of official uh arabic language centers mm. and then you've always had official um tahfiz centers for quran and stuff like that they, those are you can pretty much get that wherever mm. um charities and things like that, that that provide these different type of services for people who want to learn. Generally, the people who want to learn are there for a specific amount of time. So it's not like a Hijra thing. It's more like a, I'm going to study for two years and then go home, right? Um, in regard to Hijra, uh, you have to be creative uh, in Egypt because um, there is no Hijra visa or anything like that yeah. so you have to like with most with most uh, immigration offices you have to have a reason to be there so if you bought a home if you married a local um, all these even if they caught you without a visa they took you to jail or something like that if you say okay well I'm married to an Egyptian they say okay well you know they'll you, you spend a little time there and then they'll send you back out yeah. Other people will be just deported yeah. because you don't have a reason to be here. You're here illegally, right? And that's new because prior to that, you can drive drive around, hit a roadblock or something, and then they look at your passport and just, you know, mm. let you go. You can, they don't even look for the visa. That was back back then. Even you can, uh, you can get stopped by the security forces and put in jail and then released back out, even without a visa. Like, they just didn't care about that. So now things have changed. If you get caught without a visa, you can't be deported. So you need a reason to be there. So as long as you maintain a reason to be in Egypt, you can stay there. 
So you can have your children in the schools. Um, that's an option for people. Uh, you can start a business. Yeah. That's an option for people. And it's, uh, it's a lot easier in Egypt than it is in other places to, to do this, especially if you have the right connections. Um, marriage is definitely an option for men and women, you know, if you really want to stay in Egypt. But Egypt is a, it's not that easy. Yeah. Um, or Cairo in particular, it's not that easy. It's kind of, um, kind of rough around the edges, yeah. you know. Uh, but they do have places. Mm that are more suburban, yeah. you know. But then, uh, again, it's the difference between Talib Alim, like somebody yeah. trying to seek knowledge, and uh, living. Yeah. So you have to make that distinction. Yeah, so yeah, that's the thing, that's a good intention, because if somebody's going to seek knowledge, I think it's, it's one of the top places, right, for yes, learning yeah. Quran and Arabic and, yeah. and things like that. Right. Would you still say it's one of the top places? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah. One thing about uh, Egypt is that it has a really deep history. Like, mm. Amr, you have Amr bin As mm. uh, Um that goes back to the time of the Sahaba. Yeah. You know, so yeah. from there you got all kind of historical uh, places there, where things where Islamic knowledge is being taught. So if a person wanted to dig really deep, they can they can go there and really benefit from yeah. um, from being there. Uh, so yeah, it's still a destination because their teachers didn't go anywhere. Yeah. They're still there, you know. Yeah, sure. and so in terms of family, how comfortable is it? Because you know, a lot of people coming from the West, a lot of people haven't traveled. Mm. And certainly the, the, the family and the children did right. not travel. So, you know, sometimes coming from the West, we need a certain level of luxury right. or at least, you know, basic kind of needs. How easy is it to get something comfortable? What's the prices like in terms of living? Okay, Living if, you talk, if you're talking about Cairo now, Cairo is a big city, so it'd be comparable to, I'm not sure, I'm not sure about London, maybe. Mm. Definitely New York City. It's mm. like big, everything's built up, right? Uh, but once you move into New Cairo, you start to see that they start spreading things out a little bit. Mm. So if you're comfortable living with like, on the 12th floor with, you know, um, with no lift, you would, it, maybe with no lift in some places, <laughs> right? But if you if you uh, are comfortable with that and you yeah. like that, like they call it the shabby area, where it's like everything is going, like it's always busy, the streets are always crowded. If you like that type of thing, they you know that's that's great. You know, if you consider that being comfortable, yeah, you can find it because actually, the outside is rough in these areas, but the inside is what you make it. Mm. Like you can renovate a, a place. Even if, you, even if you're renting, because the rent sometimes is very cheap to where you can paint it up, put a new toilet in there, put new stuff in there, and it's not gonna cost you that much to do that. So you can be really comfortable. Then when you go outside, you have the, this area where everybody's hustling and bustling and there's shops everywhere, yeah. you know. That's the, what they call the shabby area. But if you go to- uh, Is it the, cheaper in that area than yeah, the- Yeah, it's cheaper. Okay. It's cheaper. You can still probably get something for like $100 a month or something like that, but you really, in, you know, like you in with the Egyptians really yeah. in that case, unless a group of, of people move there. Yeah. But if you by yourself, you, you're in there. Yeah. Like, but there's some benefits to that because generally speaking, Egyptians are friendly. Mm. So you can, you know, you can will and deal, you can learn things, you can learn the language, mm. you know, you can, um, you, can be, you can be comfortable and safe there. Like nobody will bother you. <clears throat> but on the, on, the other, on the other hand, like if you're used to like suburban houses, villas type thing, you have to go to New Cairo. Mm. And in New Cairo, you have places like Rahab and Medinity and these places that you can find um, proper villas, nice ones, uh, built like modern, mm. you know, because you, you do have some villas in some of these areas, but they're like old, like 80 years old or something, or 100 years old. So it, it looks, you wouldn't want to really, you know, but again, these areas, yeah, they're livable. Yeah. Like Rahab, Medinity, um, Tajir Muhammad, these places like that, yeah. they're livable, you know, and, they're, and they have the amenities that you need, the five speed internet and, and these things, you know. Would you say that's like the middle kind of living? You have a high level living. Mm. Like you have, I would say Rahab is a higher level. It's not, mm. it's not, it's not middle. It's not middle, it's How it's much are you talking level. for a month for a property? 
there now, man, I think it's like, it starts at like 8,000 or something like that. 8,000 um, uh, 8, Egyptian pounds, which is like um, maybe $500 or something. Mm. Don't quote me on that, but it's around mm. that, that figure. Um, $500 a month. And then Rahab is kind of like the apartments. You have to, they have new area, newer areas, but it's been around for a while now. So a lot of the apartments are like used up. So you have to kind of, and then sometimes the building is not that, construction is not that great. So you have water in the walls. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with like the con, yeah. the, con the brick, yeah. um, the way they build. And then if a pipe leaks or something, it just, goes into the wall and starts breaking up the paint at the bottom yeah, of it, yeah. you know. Yeah. So you have a lot of buildings like that in Rahab, so you have to kind of shoot for Medinity or shoot for yeah. the new capital city. You can buy there, by the way. Yeah. People you can, can, you can people buy, can buy there. Yeah, and they can buy And you know, what, what does that allow you in terms of, like, residency or you, you uh, guaranteed, if, like? It's, I, would, I, would, I would venture to say that it's guaranteed, you know. <clears> you just need to go through the proper channels yeah. to, to get it done because you you might deal with like security the security forces they say like what you doing here yeah. well i own this property over here so if you say you own a property and they say okay you need to get the residency yeah. or what have you it's not this tourist stuff but generally that's what we get well how much are you looking at for a property how much are they to buy do you know that's a good question bro like it's, like an apartment it's in the millions or... of pounds but the thing is that you can you can make installments. That's how they do it there. Yeah. So it's not like you got to come with the whole amount. You yeah. come with a piece of it, a portion of it, and then you would pay uh, a monthly installment. And then uh, every every year you would pay like a, a lump sum. Yeah. And you would do it like that yeah, until yeah. you pay off the whole property. Yeah. How safe is Egypt? Because I hear some horror stories. I'm going to yeah, be honest with you. Did. Yeah, Hearing a lot of horror did. stories, uh, you know, Westerners, tourists getting ripped off, robbed. Okay, from, from my experience, I would say that is very safe from, from my experience. And we lived in the, in the dirtiest parts that you can think, mm -hmm. you know, is it wasn't the, it, it wasn't, some areas were worse than where we lived, but, and that, that came without understanding what was going on. Like we didn't, we just moved to this place because it's close to the center. But Egyptians themselves would, look, would be scared to come back to where we live, yeah. you know. But we, we were like, you know, we were all into our Arabic and Korans and all this stuff. So we, it, we put like blinds on it. But um, I would say that it's safe, but you will have stories that people say otherwise. But generally speaking, it's safe. Yeah. But then at the same time, it, it would be comparable, like going to UK into yeah, yeah. a bad neighborhood yeah. and not knowing it's a bad neighborhood and then complaining if you have problems yeah. there, right? So if you want to com compare it to a bad neighborhood in the UK mm. and that, mm. it's no comparison. How about education for kids, children? If, you, if you're looking for, I say the best thing you can do is consult people to develop a program that fits what you want, the outcomes you want, right? Um, education in Egypt is business, right? So if you want high level education, you gotta pay for it, right? <laughs> if, you want, if you want high level education in Egypt, you have to pay for it. If you, if you create your own program, mm. meaning that you bring the teachers in, because I knew brothers that did that as well. They brought Quran teachers in, Arabic teachers. Yeah. That's common in Egypt for uh, tutoring and math and all that stuff. You can just actually take a curriculum and have someone teach it. And yeah. it would be kind of like on a private basis or a group basis if you brought other families in. Um, the education itself though, uh, I know brothers that send their children to Ashar. I know a brother that, that the, um, his children well, the, his older children finished, um, and he was he was happy with with the outcome, mm. you know. So I guess it's, it's I guess it's based on what you're looking for. Mm. But if you want like a high high level secular education, you're gonna pay for it. Yeah. 
And then a lot of times what you, what you think might be high level based on price is not really high level. Mm. It's like, yeah, you know, it's yeah, you mediocre. Don't, you don't get much for the... Yeah, yeah the, you don't get... Yeah. You would have to go to a school that the <clears throat> embassies t send their children. Like yeah. these type of schools where they have like proper teachers in there. Yeah. You it's know. expensive. Yeah, and it's expensive. It's, yeah. it's, I, I would say it's unaffordable, you mm -hmm. know, for some people, you know. But you can find as hard schools that are almost free, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But again, the quality is not going to be the same. Yeah. But if you really, really want to focus on education, I would suggest creating your own program. Mm -hmm. What other points would you like to address in terms of Hydra to Egypt? Um, would you still think it's, it's a good option for families, or is it more for students of knowledge? I think, I think that uh, it depends on where a person's coming from, uh, what their standards are, what they're used to, how much they're willing to compromise, you know, because it's definitely not going to be like the same, you know. And I didn't realize that until later. Like, when you start to explore, you say, wow, I didn't, I didn't know, subhanAllah, I didn't know this even existed like that. Like, Malaysia is one of those countries, you know, yeah. that you go in and say, well, subhanAllah, like, I, I thought everything was you know, second class, but you know, you know, but um, yeah, if, when you go there, you have to kind of have a, a lower expectation. That sounds bad, mm -hmm. it's just a reality, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you can't expect much out of it in terms of, it's, Egypt is like, it's gonna sound bad, but it's the reality. It's a, it's a, it's like a house ran by a dysfunctional family. <laughs> Right. Yeah. It's it's a lot of a lot of things go like I can go to a shop and go sit in the guy's chair that's the you know, it's like he's my brother or something or mm -hmm. my cousin, yeah. you know, and that's how they deal with one another. And it's you like it <laughs> in some ways and then some ways you say, Well this is really unprofessional, you know. <laughs> so it's all kinda how you how you see it. And then mm -hmm. the police are like Salaam alaikum, alaikum salam you know, it's kinda like that. But then they can be like the bully guy. Yeah, you yeah. know, so it's kind of, but you, you would look at a policeman maybe, I would say in the States, a lot differently than you do. Yeah. Because you'll have a guy, this sounds bad again, you double parked, and I saw this, you double parked, and the police guy comes. This is the lower level guy, he comes and he says, uh, you double parked. And the guy pull out a pound and give it to him and he'll walk away. Mm. <laughs> you know, so it's like, that would never happen. Yeah in other places. Yeah. And then like you'll go into a, a restaurant and it's loud music, like it's a party, yeah. you know. And it's just, it's just a sense of like unprofessionalism. Mm -hmm. But it's unprofessional in a sense that like your cousin's doing it. It's your cousin's shop for <laughs> you. <Yeah. laughs> so that's easier, bro. Yeah. So you gotta take it. And the disorganization yeah. kind of allows you to exist there. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not a, nothing really official. So you have to, to get things done, you have to kind of go through people yeah. to be official. Yeah. If you try to do it yourself, they might say, you know what, come back tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever, come back next week and you keep coming back. I remember a brother did this for almost a year. He'd come back and he said, they said, come back next week, come back next month, come back. That's easier, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if, you, if you're prepared to deal with something mm -hmm. like that. Do you, would you say it's... It, would you say there's other options for like the same kind of cost? Uh, would you say there's better options than Egypt now? It's not the same as it was, or would you still say it's worth looking at? The thing about Egypt is it's easy. Mm. It can't get any easier, mm. you know, that you show up in a place, pay $25. It's like an amusement park, right? You pay the $25 and they say, you know, go ahead. You know, it can't get much easier than that. Other places, it's, it's easy, like Malaysia's easy. But don't tell them that you want to stay for a long time or you want to, then they start to scrutinize. Okay, what you doing? Why, why are you trying to, you know, it's, they take it a lot more serious, you know? Yeah. So Egypt is that place that you can show up and let in and then you just do whatever you want to do, you know? Even if you overstay or whatever, whatever, you know that when you leave, you just pay on the way out. You yeah. know, you pay a penalty. Yeah. So is there countries like that? I don't know. I, I can't say. I think Egypt is one of those 
special places. Like, yeah. You, you can't sure. do that in any, any other place and it'd be okay, you know. Yeah. So if you're looking for ease, Egypt is definitely the place. Yeah. And then if you can understand the people, it makes your stay better. Like mm. if you understand their sense of humor, like they don't like frowning people. Yeah. And I'm kind of like a frown, I'm always in deep thought, so I'm frowning a little bit. So they don't like that. They like this happy people to joke in with you. Yeah. You know, that's the type of people you're dealing with. And if you're that type of person, you'll love to, you'll love it. But if you're yeah. that mean guy, like they don't deal with that well. Yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah that's that, man. Jazakallah yeah. Do you have any final, any final points you think would be helpful? I, I would say that, man, this thing, this thing is an adventure, man. I have to say, like, it's, it's something that if we, if a lot more people embark on, the, on this journey, it makes it easy for the people to come after, mm. you know. You have to have a sense of adventure because a lot of people don't like instability. Mm. They don't like to be unstable anywhere. Yeah. And I understand that later in life. As I've yeah. become older, I understand, um, you know, people don't like being in a place without being legal yeah. and that type of stuff. Yeah. You know, um, so I would say that the best thing a person can do is visit these different places. And when you visit, make part of your um, your visit understanding how you can stay there legally. Yeah. Right. And if you have a family, how you strategize how you can bring your family and how you don't have to worry too much about all the immigration issues. Mm -hmm. If you can get over that, then I think the rest is pretty easy. Sure. Thanks for your insight. إنك لا تهدي من أحببت ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء